How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can double your FPS in practically any game utilizing a modern Radeon GPU. In this video we're going to be covering AMD's fluid motion frame technology which will allow you to double FPS in practically any game alongside showing you step by step how to enable it on your system if you want to try it out and give it a go. And for an extremely brief summary this technology is phenomenal and it's definitely something you should at least try out on your system if it's available. Tired of seeing the activate windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Anything from the RX 6000 to 7000 series will currently support this technology. I really hope AMD in the near future at least enable this for the RX 5000 series because I think it will be a phenomenal performance gain for those still very modern GPUs. AMD's Fluid Motion Frames is basically frame generation but for all DirectX 11, 12 and from what it seems Vulkan titles. The main difference between Fluid Motion Frames and typical frame generation is that Fluid Motion Frames happens at the end of the rendering pipeline. Unlike FSR 3 or DLSS 3 frame generation which has access to motion vectors during the rendering pipeline of the game, allowing for more intelligent interpolation of what the next frame will look like as it has access to the motion vectors of the game. Alongside this, it can be applied before the HUD elements of the game are rendered, giving a much cleaner and less distracting look. The only downside to FSR 3 or DLSS 3 frame generation is that it requires to be developed into the game directly. There are a few options to potentially get around this in some small use cases. There are DLSS 3 frame generation mods for games which have FSR 2 support or DLSS support built into them, but again this only typically works on offline games. The support is very limited and it requires you to download third-party mods and again that will only work currently on an NVIDIA GPU. AMD's fluid motion frames allows you to implement frame generation on practically all games. As this is frame generation these are technically fake frames but there is still so many use cases for these and it's something you should 100% try out for yourself before discarding it. The performance uplift is literally double in any game that you apply this to and that's not even the best feature. As fluid motion frames is applied at the end of the rendering pipeline of the game it actually allows us to be able to double the FPS in games which have hard FPS limits. A few games that come to mind is the brand new Forza Motorsport in online mode is capped at 60 FPS. Utilizing fluid motion frames will allow you to get up to 120 FPS. Yes, you won't see any latency benefits from using that, but it gives you a much better smoother visual experience, especially if you're on a higher refresh rate monitor. Once you're inside of this section, navigate down to the blue hyperlink for the technical preview driver. The version you're downloading may be slightly newer. Select the driver and save this to your PC. Once you're inside of the installation page for the driver, navigate down to additional options, ensure that the full installation has been selected. If it does say that this is going to be a downgrade in the top right hand side, that's completely normal as this is a development driver and stable drivers won't see this as a newer version. Select your personal preference for the AMD information box at the bottom, then select install. Wait for this to complete. Navigate down to the bottom and select finish. Just to be on the safe side, I would recommend navigating to the bottom left, right clicking on your power button and performing a quick system restart. After a system restart, right click on the desktop and open the AMD software. You will need to set up a few quick settings to ensure that AMD Fluid Motion Frames works in your games. Start by navigating to the top left hand side to the gaming section, head to graphics. Scroll down, you should then see the option for AMD Fluid Motion Frames. We're actually going to be turning this off for now because if we have this set up on the graphics panel, it will always be applied to all of your games, which we don't necessarily want. For now, there does seem to be a bug with AMD Anti-Lag Plus, conflicting with some anti-cheat systems in many games like CS2, Warzone, Apex. Even if you're on the stable version of the driver, I would highly recommend disabling anti-lag plus for now. Once you've checked that fluid motion frames is available on your GPU, we now need to set up the in-game overlay. Any performance benefits from fluid motion frames will only be shown utilizing the AMD Radeon overlay. This is super quick and simple to set up. All you need to do is head over to the performance section, then go to settings. Go down to the enable metrics overlay and switch this on. You'll more than likely see an overlay come up in the top right hand side. Next up, head over to the metrics section in the top left hand side. Head over to tracking. I like to set the sampling interval to about 0.25, making the samples quicker. I like to have that set up for both options. Under metrics profile, we're going to be going down to custom. This is where you can enable or disable certain metrics with inside of the overlay. For the most part, I would recommend copying these settings. If you would like to enable a graph for a certain option, then enable the graph using this button. If you would like to disable a certain option, then make sure that the eye has been unselected. For the most part, I would recommend having frame rates on with a frame rate graph. I have frame time enabled and micro stutter rate enabled. Graphics API, I also have enabled as it's really handy to see if your game will even 
support AMD's fluid motion frames. Heading down to latency, I like to have both frame generation and system lag enabled. Going down to GPU, this is complete personal preference. You could choose to disable all of these options if you wish to do so, but I personally like to have GPU utilization, total board power, and temperature selected. GPU memory, I don't have any of these options selected. And for CPU, I like to have CPU utilization, CPU temperature, and power. And system memory, I also have disabled. Again, you can completely customize that. Next up, go to the overlay section. Here you can adjust the size of the overlay to anything bigger or smaller, and you can adjust the transparency of the background. With that set up, we're now ready to boot into our games and try out AMD's fluid motion frame. It's worthwhile noting that AMD's fluid motion frames is supported in multiplayer games. You can use this across the board in basically any of them, but do bear in mind that due to the fact this is generating fake frames, it may not be the best idea in hyper-competitive titles where you're already getting high FPS anyway. Here I've booted into Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm utilizing a Radeon RX 7600 and this game is running at 1440p medium settings. As a baseline, before you enable AMD's fluid motion frames, you should at least look to get somewhere between 50 to 70 frames per second at a base level. This will ensure that you don't run into any massive latency deviations as once you enable fluid motion frames, your FPS is going to double, but you won't see the latency improvements from doubling the FPS. As you can see for me, I'm getting just over 100 FPS here, which is fantastic. Once you're in your game, to enable fluid motion frames, simply press Alt and Z or Z on your keyboard. Once inside of it, head over to the three lines to the drop down menu, then go to graphics. You'll first of all need to ensure that AMD fluid motion frames has been enabled inside of this menu. It will automatically kick in in your game. And as you can see for me, I'm now achieving over 200 frames per second at 1440p on an RX 7600. I'm not seeing any visual artifacts or ghosting, again, because I am getting quite a high frame rate here. And the shortcomings of this technology will be exaggerated at lower frames, but this is absolutely phenomenal. In a slower paced single player title like this, this is just enhancing my experience drastically. If you wanted to turn on or off fluid motion frames on a specific title, all you would need to do again is open up the AMD overlay utilizing Alt and Z, heading up to the three lines, then going to the games section. To ensure that your game gets detected inside of this section, make sure that you press the refresh or scan button at the top. Scroll down until you find the game in which you're playing. For me, that's Red Dead 2. Click on the game and here you can enable or disable motion frames quickly and easily for that specific game. So again, I've just turned it off and we're back down to 117 frames per second. Pressing the overlay again, turning it on for the specific game, and we're now instantly using it. Now, the only thing you need to be aware of when utilizing fluid motion frames is that it will enable and disable itself automatically depending on how quickly the frames are changing on screen. As you can see for me, I'm currently in an environment where most of the information on the screen isn't changing all that much, but if I start drastically moving my mouse around, you'll see that the FPS drops back down to the base frame rate because it doesn't really have any information to go off of because things are changing so drastically. It's very unlikely in most games you play that this will automatically start disabling itself because things are moving too fast. Especially for those of you planning on utilizing this in first person shooter games or games like GTA, things don't change that drastically that often so you won't really run into that issue. And it's just that simple and easy to set up. Here I've booted into Warzone 2 and I'm utilizing relatively high settings and I'm getting about 70 frames per second on this setup. And as Warzone 2 is a DirectX 12 title, it means it's completely compatible with fluid motion frames. So once again, press Alt and Z on your keyboard, head to the small menu in the top left, find Call of Duty, then turn fluid motion frames on. Once you're done, go back inside of your game. And as you can now see, I'm achieving nearly 160 frames per second, which is phenomenal. Yes, there is still a small input latency penalty as I'm not actually achieving this FPS and we are generating those frames. But as the base frame rate was 70, this is still a more than acceptable experience, especially for those of you playing on controllers or if you're not competing at the highest level. And again, at any point, if you wish to turn this off, press the same keys, head over to the option, switch it off. You're then no longer utilizing fluid motion frames and you're running your game in the standard mode. Here we have LA Noir. This is a relatively older title, but it does support DirectX 11 and it's quite a unique use case because LA Noir actually has a hard FPS limit of 30 frames per second. In a scenario like this, 30 FPS is almost unplayable, especially for those of you on high refresh rate monitors. This is just a really unenjoyable experience and there's no way to get around this. Press Alt and Z, head to the left-hand side, enabling fluid motion frames this title, you can now see we're achieving 60 frames per second. Again, you will see the FPS change quite drastically if you do start moving the mouse around very quickly, but for the most part, this is delivering a much smoother experience. Other games which come to mind are older Bethesda titles, which basically break at higher frame rates. Due to fluid motion frames rendering at the end of the graphics pipeline, it allows us to achieve higher FPS in those titles without breaking the game engine because the game engine itself isn't running any 
slightly faster. If you're looking to utilize AMD Fluid Motion frames on older titles, which I would 100% recommend, you could look to install DXVK, which is a translation layer, which allows you to take older DirectX 9, 10, or 11 titles and have them run on the Vulkan API, which will then unlock support for AMD's Fluid Motion frames. This is something I utilized in GTA 4 for PC, as it runs horribly in its standard DirectX 9 form. On the left hand side, we have the standard DX9 game. In the middle, we are just utilizing the DXVK mod to utilize Vulkan, and on the right hand side, now we're able to use Vulkan, which supports Fluid Motion frames, we have Fluid Motion frames enabled. You can see the performance difference from each version, and we're getting just about 200 frames per second on GTA 4 at max settings, 1440p on this RX 7600. Another fantastic use case you may want to experiment around with if you do have a VR headset is utilizing Fluid Motion frames in some of your favorite VR titles. Especially for those of you on Quest 2 or higher refresh rate headsets, this could take a game typically running at 60 frames per second up to 120, giving you an extremely smooth and fluid experience. I genuinely believe that this technology is one of the best things to come to PC gaming in the last few years. It's a fantastic tool to have in the PC optimization toolbox, as there are just so many use cases for it. And there you guys have it. Let me know which games you're going to be utilizing AMD's fluid motion frames on, or if you're waiting out for native FSR frame generation in your favorite titles. Let me know of your results down below. If you're serious about optimizing your PC for the best performance possible, please do check out the playlist section in the description down below for further optimizations, or if you're not entirely sure where to go next, check out one of the videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.